an apostate pope under the control of Satan, Father Malachi Martin et al. Father Malachi Martin, reader of The Third Secret of Fatima, interview with Bernard Jansen, 1992, The Kingdom of Darkness. Jansen, in our discussion earlier, you just touched on the subject of Satan's assault on the papacy. Perhaps we could have a brief discussion about that. Martin, what I think is fatally necessary for every Catholic to know, and that is the fate of the papacy and the coming stress and danger that we shall be without the strength of the papacy. Bernard, is it ever possible that the cardinals at a future conclave could elect a heretical pope? Martin, brief pause over the sensitive nature of the question. You know, they have elected men in the past who had heretical ideas, two or three. They have never elected yet an apostate. An apostate has rebelled against the very fundamental of faith and rejected God and Christ. We have apostates now who are papabili, men who could be elected Pope. Yes, we could have an apostate, but in that day, then we are into something terrible. We're into something which, Bernard, is something that, if you think on it, in full knowledge of the meaning of your terms, is nightmarish. It would test the faith of Saint Catherine of Siena. It would test the faith of the greatest saint. It would try the patience of Job. It would be a black day, a day on which you can clothe every window in black and put out the lights and dress in sackcloth and ashes and pray that you're spared because your faith is going to be battered to pieces. If that happens, because then they have the prize and everything goes underground. And we are indeed on our way to becoming what Pope, what Paul VI in his misery called in 1978, an infinitesimally small part of humanity, completely marginalized, and pushed to the side and forgotten as a quaint group of people as interesting as Tibetan astrologers on a modern campus. Father Malachi Martin interview with Art Bell on May 4th, 1998. Martin, the prophecy of Fatima is not a pleasant document to read, not pleasant news. It implies, it doesn't make any sense unless we accept that there will be, or that there is in progress, a wholesale apostasy amongst clerics and laity in the Catholic Church, that the institutional organization of the Roman Catholic Church, that is the organization of parishes, dioceses, archbishops and bishops and cardinals, and the Roman bureaucracies and the chanceries throughout the world, unless that is totally disrupted and rendered null and void, the third secret makes no sense. And number two, the other salient characteristic about it is that it means intense suffering for believers. Father Malachi Martin interview with Art Bell on July 13, 1998, the very anniversary of the third secret of Fatima. Bell, all right, here we go. Just a couple of things I want to quickly read. One from a friend in Australia, Father, who says, I had a Jesuit priest tell me more of the third secret of Fatima years ago in Perth. He said, among other things, the last Pope would be under control of Satan. Pope John fainted, thinking it might be him. We were interrupted before I could hear the rest. Any comment on that? Martin. Yes. Um, it sounds as if they were reading or being told the text of the third secret. Bell. Oh my. Martin. It sounds like it. But it's sufficiently vague to make one hesitate. It sounds like it. Bell. Father, is there any circumstance under which you can imagine that you would feel free to reveal the secret? Martin, yes, yes. If there was a total collapse at the center. Bell, and you anticipate that, don't you? Martin, I anticipate it as a possibility, Art. I can't predict, but I anticipate it as a possibility. Certainly, yes, I do. Malachi personally confirmed to me in 1997 that the Pope who will lead the apostasy in the church will be a heretic and an anti-Pope. Father Paul Kramer, Facebook quote, May of 2016. We are facing what we may have to face, finally, the false Pope. Father Malachi Martin, Detroit, Michigan, circa 1989. 
in November 1992. In the third secret, it is foretold, among other things, that the great apostasy in the church begins at the top. Cardinal Luigi Chiappi, personal theologian to Popes Pius XII, John XXIII, Paul VI, John Paul I, and John Paul II, from a 1995 personal letter to Professor Bogmartner of Salzburg, Austria. Father Gerard Mura, the Third Secret of Fatima has it been completely revealed, the periodical Catholic, published by the Transalpine Redemptorists, Orkney Isles, Scotland, Great Britain, March 2002. The apostasy of the city of Rome from the Vicar of Christ and its destruction by Antichrist may be thoughts so new to many Catholics that I think it well to recite the text of theologians of greatest repute. First, Malvenda, who writes expressly on the subject, states as the opinion of Ribera, Gaspar Mellus, Bogas Sures, Bellamine and Bosis, that Rome shall apostatize from the faith, drive away the Vicar of Christ, and return to its ancient paganism. Then the church shall be scattered, driven into the wilderness, and shall be for a time, as it was in the beginning, invisible, hidden in the catacombs, in dens, in mountains, in lurking places. For a time it shall be swept, as it were, from the face of the earth. Such is the universal testimony of the fathers of the early church. Cardinal Henry Edward Manning, The Present Crisis of the Holy See, 1861, London, Burns and Lambert, pages 88 to 90 and page 79. Cardinal Alfredo Ottaviani, who read The Third Secret, made reference to one of its themes during an allocution to the members of the Marian International Academy. He declared, It suffices to cast a rapid glance at what is happening at this moment in the world in order to recognise that without the intervention of the Mother of All Mercy, near the All-Powerful, the world risks becoming pagan once more a paganism more deplorable than the first paganism, because it is aggravated by apostasy. We are witnessing a veritable deluge of sins, a deluge which leaves behind it a nauseating quagmire, infected by immorality, lies and blasphemy. 15th of December, 1960. Allocution de SM. The Cardinal Ottaviani à l'Académie Miriale Internationale. Documentation Catholique, 1961, column 244. 1963, in a public admonition to his spiritual sons amidst the Second Vatican Council, Padre Pio said, Due to the rampant injustice and abuse of power, we have reached a compromise with atheistic materialism, communism, a denial of the rights of God. This is the punishment foretold at Fatima. All the priests who support the possibility of a dialogue with the negators of God and with the Luciferian powers of the world, Freemasonry, are mad, have lost their faith, no longer believe in the gospel. In so doing, they betray the word of God because Christ came to bring on earth perpetual covenant only to men of heart, goodwill, but did not join with the men thirsty for power and dominion over the brothers. The flock is dispersed when the shepherds ally with the enemies of the truth of Christ. All the forms of power made death to the will of the authority of the heart of God are rapacious wolves that renew the passion of Christ and make the Madonna shed tears. Published in Avineri, August 19, 1978. See also a partial quote in The Fourth Secret of Fatima, 2006, by Antonio Socchi. The tale of the devil is functioning in the disintegration of the Catholic world. The darkness of Satan has entered and spread throughout the Catholic Church even to its summit. Apostasy, the loss of the faith, is spreading throughout the world and into the highest levels within the Church. Pope Paul VI, October 13, 1977, in a formal address marking the 60th anniversary of the miracle of the sun, as quoted in the Milan-based daily Italian newspaper Corriere della Sera page 7 of its issue dated October 14, 1977. 
The Blessed Virgin was alerting us against the apostasy in the church. I would not be surprised if the third secret alluded to dark times for the church, grave confusions and troubling apostasies within Catholicism itself. We consider the grave crisis we have lived through since the Council, the signs that this apostasy has been fulfilled do not seem to be lacking. Cardinal Silvio Odi, to Italian journalist Lucio Brunelli, in the journal Il Sabato, Rome, March 17, 1990. Before Christ's second coming, the Church must pass through a final trial that will shake the faith of many believers. The persecution that accompanies her pilgrimage on earth will unveil the mystery of iniquity in the form of a religious deception offering men an apparent solution to their problems at the price of apostasy from the truth. The supreme religious deception is that of the Antichrist, a pseudo-messianism by which man glorifies himself in place of God and of his Messiah come in the flesh. Catechism of the Catholic Church, 1992, paragraph number 675, The Church's Ultimate Trial. Rome will lose the faith and become the seat of Antichrist. Selected excerpt taken from Our Lady of La Salette's Secret to Melanie Caltevin on 19th of September 1846. Approved apparition. Final version published in 1879 at Lecce, Italy, with the imprimatur and approval of Bishop Salvatore Luigi Zola, CRL, the Bishop of Lecce. I cannot reveal anything about what I have learned at Fatima about the third secret, but I can say that it has two parts. The one concerns the Pope, the other logically, although I should say nothing, should be the continuation of the words, in Portugal the dogma of the faith will always be preserved. Father Joseph Schwelvig, 1952, Pope Pius XII sent him to interrogate Sister Lucia on September the 2nd, 1952, Frere Michel de la Sainte Trinité. The Whole Truth About Fatima, The Third Secret, Volume 3, page 710, pages 337 to 338. November 11, 1984, Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger affirmed that the third secret concerns a radical call for conversion, the absolute importance of history, the dangers threatening the faith and the life of the Christian, and therefore of the world and then the importance of Novisium, the last events at the end of time. If it is not made public, at least for the time being, it is in order to prevent religious prophecy from being mistaken for a quest for the sensational, literally for sensationalism. But the things contained in this third secret correspond to what has been announced in scripture and has been said again and again in many other Marian apparitions. Ecco perché la fede e in crisi in the review. Jesus, page 79. I believe that there is a connection between that which is announced in the first part of the secret, which concerns wars and sufferings, which would be everywhere, and the second part, which concerns the persecutions and a type of breakdown of the faith. Because where the ellipse, the three dots, was placed, it means there is the third part which is not revealed. And then the conclusion, in Portugal, the dogma of the faith will always be preserved, etc. This suggests to me that there is a relationship between faith and the third part of the secret. Therefore, it is something that relates to the church. It is some kind of universal crisis which affects the whole church and all of humanity. Father Jose dos Santos Valinho, nephew of Sister Lucia. This public statement was made on the 14th of February, 2003 broadcast on the program Enigma, which was transmitted primetime nationwide on RAI, the national TV network of Italy. The Fatima Crusade, issue 74, page 76. Pope Benedict XVI proclaimed the need for a year of faith that seeks to awaken humanity at a critical moment. In vast areas of the earth, the faith risks being extinguished like a flame without fuel, the Pope warned. We are facing a profound crisis of faith, a loss of a religious sense which represents one of the greatest challenges for the Church today. The renewal of faith must, then, 
be a priority for the entire church in our time. Pope Benedict XVI, Vatican City, 27th of January 2012, from his address to the participants in the plenary session of the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith. Act bravely, my brethren. Take courage and trust in the Lord. The time is fast approaching in which there will be great trials and afflictions. Perplexities and dissensions, both spiritual and temporal, will abound. The charity of many will grow cold, and the malice of the wicked will increase. The devils will have unusual power. The immaculate purity of our order and of others will be so much obscured that there will be very few Christians who will obey the true sovereign pontiff and the Roman church with loyal hearts and perfect charity. At the time of this tribulation, a man not canonically elected will be raised to the pontificate who by his cunning will endeavor to draw many into error and death. Then scandals will be multiplied, our order will be divided and many others will be entirely destroyed because they will consent to error instead of opposing it. There will be such diversity of opinions and schisms among the people and the religious and the clergy that except those days were shortened, according to the words of the gospel, even the elect would be led into error were they not specially guided amid such great confusion by the immense mercy of God. Then our rule and manner of life will be violently opposed by some and terrible trials will come upon us. Those who are found faithful receive the crown of life, but woe to those who, trusting solely in their order, shall fall into tepidity, for they will not be able to support the temptations permitted for the proving of the elect. Those who preserve their fervor and adhere to virtue with love and zeal for the truth will suffer injuries and persecutions as rebels and schismatics. For their persecutors, urged by the evil spirits, will say they are rendering a great service to God by destroying such pestilent men from the face of the earth. But the Lord will be the refuge of the afflicted and will save all who trust in him. And in order to be like their head, Jesus Christ, these, the elect, will act with confidence and by their death will purchase for themselves eternal life. Choosing to obey God rather than man, they will fear nothing and they will prefer to perish physically rather than consent to falsehood and perfidy. Some preachers will keep silent about the truth and others will trample it underfoot and deny it. Sanctity of life will be held in division even by those who outwardly profess it. For in those days, Jesus Christ will send them not a true pastor, but a destroyer. Works of the Sepharic Father, St. Francis of Assisi, London R. Washbourne, 1882, pages 248 to 250.